All right, let's give you a rundown of Starlink and our 12 volt modification for when we go away off grid camping. That's our Starlink dish sitting up on top of our caravan. Um, get it up high so you end up with no obstructions from trees and a nice clear sky uh, for your best results. Get the cable running down there. And then hopefully you can see it. It runs up and into a little RJ, RJ45 connector, runs inside the cupboard. Okay, so this is our setup inside the caravan. Um, TP-Link Archer router. Um, it's, a, it's a 12 volt, it runs off a 12 volt DC plug so we can use it. Um, in our system. This here is our power over Ethernet injector. Um, either side of those we have our adapted uh, plugs, um, RJ45 plugs that we that we cut and um, and repin um, to fit the Starlink configuration. And so through the back there we've got our uh, Starlink cord um, that's been cut um, and an RJ45 plug put on either side using the Starlink configuration. Um, we've got the step up converter there. It is a 192 watt DC DC converter input 12 volt out popped 48 volt now that's what this here is what runs the Starlink dish your Starlink dish is actually the modem your router isn't your modem which is why we can bypass we can bypass a Starlink router and we can use our own own router okay so this is the amperage draw from our Starlink satellite connected via the 12 volt mod um, so we're not having to run an inverter and run it through 240. Um, just want to do a comparison of how many amps or watts it draws uh, versus when we hook it up through the Starlink router and a 240 connection via the inverter. Um, so basically when we go up the beach or anywhere off grid with not a lot of signal we use the Starlink um, but when you're off grid you need as much power as you can so every little bit of amperage you're saving uh, goes towards being able to stay off grid longer so this here is yeah basically um, our 12 volt Starlink setup and the amount of power that it's using I uh, will now switch to the 240 volt Starlink router via the inverter and compare. Okay, so we now have the um, uh, Starlink hooked up via uh, the Starlink router um, through 240 and an inverter for when we're off grid. Um, we'll give it, I don't know, 15 20 minutes to settle down. Um, we'll come back and check out the uh, amperage draw versus the 12 volt. Okay, so we've given um, we've given the Starlink uh, dish to a little bit of time to um, to settle down and adjust. Um, this is basically um, where it sits uh, via the 240 volt and two kilowatt for energy inverter. Um, sits anywhere from you know four and a half amps to I don't know, five and a half, it's jumping up to six amps here, so um, you know, basically what we've noticed is, you know, one and a half, one and a half to two amp difference of draw um, between the two. Um, you factor that into you know, traveling away and, you know, trying to conserve battery and power. We've got a 100, 120 amp hour lithium battery, it's not a big it's not a big 12 volt system so 
every little bit of um, every little bit of power uh, comes in handy, especially when the when it's overcast and uh, you're struggling to get power back in. All right, so we'll go back to um, to a 12 volt Starlink setup, um, and then I'll give it another 15 minutes uh, to settle down, and uh, just so you can see. Um, see the difference again. Um, pop the power back into the PPOE. There we go. Powering up. Uh, plug the 12 volt source back into TP Link router. Uh, and then we'll see what goes on. We'll see what goes on here. So. Router's, router's booting up. Um, Starlink dish outside on the caravan. It'll be starting to boot up. It'll be drawing some amperage and power soon. Um, and you'll see it start to it's starting to ramp up. The Starlink will use a fair bit more power in a startup process so that's why we wait 15 minutes for it to 20 minutes for it to settle back down again and then compare um, and she's up to six amps we get up here now you see the router it's still going through the boot process um, this light means it's now got a connection to Starlink, but Starlink hasn't got an internet connection just yet. So when this goes green, we know that we're live on the Starlink network again. It generally takes 30 seconds to 30, 60 seconds for it to grab a connection, I guess, or maybe a bit longer. We'll see what happens with it. run you through the um, Starlink setup outside as well while we're here mucking around with it. There you go. Starlink's now Starlink's now connected. Um, I'll show you what's going on in the app. Okay, you can see um, you can see um, Starlink still gathering obstruction data. Um, in our case, it doesn't really matter because We've got a nice clear sky. Um, you click on it, it takes it takes what well, there you go five hours uh, to map any obstructions. Uh, we might come back later and show you that. Um, you'll see also when you're connected to your own router, uh, the network uh, section is greyed out. That's because um, that relates to the Starlink router um, statistics. Uh, latency, uptime, outages, what have you. Um, speed test, so we'll run a speed test. Um, the longer it's up and running, um, the quicker it gets. Uh, generally we can get it, you know, anywhere from 150 to 200 megabits a second. Uh, sitting on 103 at the moment, which is pretty good. Uh, uploading at 29 meg megabits 25 megabits a second, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, that speed and upload comes handy. You know, when we're up TY Beach and we have no or very little mobile reception and bugger all uh, data. So, it means we can work while we're camping. Which is what it's all about. Alright, so Starlink's been you know running for about I don't know, half an hour on the twelve volt. Um, it seems to have settled down a bit. Um, and that's what it's sitting on. That's a massive saving. Compared to um, 
haven't run your inverter and overheads of your inverter and then also converting from 240 AC um, back to um, back to DC thanks for watching guys